Hello everyone, welcome to a new vlog. It is really becoming winter now, isn't it? Uh, we were so, so lucky with the weather in Cornwall. I can't believe how lucky we were. We were cold for the last couple of nights, but nothing I couldn't handle. That's one of the reasons why we chose to go to Cornwall and not further afield, because we thought if we couldn't manage the cold, we could always come home again, because it was so cold the week before. How many times can I say cold? Speaking of colds, I have still not managed to shake this one off. I'm still having coughing fits at night, so I'm a bit tired and it's just so frustrating. I just want it gone and I just want to feel better. Um, so yeah, my voice is still a little weird. Sorry about that. <laughs> but the autumn colours have really come out and the, and the leaves are starting to fall now. We're keeping our Halloween slash autumn decorations up until Christmas I think because I was late putting them up in the first place normally I'm quite sharpish at getting those autumn things out and about around the house but um, this time I was I was late so I think they're gonna stay up right until we get the Christmas decorations out I think why not particularly as the kids didn't get so much into the decorating this year so there's less Halloweeny stuff and more just autumn stuff which is quite nice. It's nice, nice to keep that up around the house. Makes it feel nice and cosy. Oh, I want to show you something I've just uh, that's just arrived in the post. I have discovered a new paper brand, <laughs> and I don't know if you're like me, but oh my gosh, I love nice paper, and I can't. If you get it, you'll get it, and I think it'll be one of those things that some people will be watching this saying like, "What just?" pretty paper what <laughs> but anyway so stamperia stamp or stamper stamperia stamperia i think that's how you'd probably say it that's the brand and um i saw it on somebody else's uh, mixed media youtube channel actually i've seen it a couple of places now once you spot a new brand new thing you start spotting it other places don't you and i bought the cosmos pack now the only thing that's such a shame about this is i don't think you get it very much in England, in Britain, so there are not very many cheap, but there aren't, I haven't seen much on eBay, and you know how I love an eBay bargain, and it's the sort of thing, crafting stuff you do find on eBay, because people buy it, they think they're going to do something, and then they never do, so eventually they sell it on eBay, and you can pick up other people's crafting bits and bobs quite cheaply but obviously not with this brand there's not much choice on eBay unfortunately so I bought this new and it's not cheap so it's nearly so it's about a pound a sheet actually and that's from Amazon probably from craft shops it's a bit more than that but it's such pretty paper um, so I bought the Cosmos range and hang on let me just show you up close like that and uh, it's all double sided just beautiful beautiful designs aren't they lovely so anyway i just thought i'd show you quickly because you might be if you like your beautiful paper then you might be interested in discovering a new brand as well so there we are yeah there's others there's a um they do they do other themes that i definitely want they do a sewing one called threads i mean with my business called Threads of a Fairy Tale, and I call it Threads for short, I feel like I should get that pack. And uh, there's a journaling one. There's one called in, um, Wonderland that looks beautiful. And they do an Alice in Wonderland set as well. So yeah, beautiful papers, but a bit on the, I don't know. Individual papers are usually around about £1.10, £1.20. It's just that I'm used to buying the I suppose the more value packs from DCWV and Prima, the big packs from Prima are quite good value as well. So that's that little uh, purchase. I have no idea what to do with the paper yet. It's one of those things like, do uh, is, you just want to look at it. I don't really want to cut it up, but I will, I will. I might do some journal making soon, some junk journal style uh, type thing, or I might use it in a mixed media project. I've got my, I've been, watching a lot of mix. I can't, I can't rest on one thing. I know I've just been doing the watercolours, but now I'm watching mixed media art and think, oh yeah, I might try some more collage-y things. And anyway, 
we'll see i think i will have some more time over cr the christmas holidays i'm really looking forward to this year because i know i'm going to be busy crafting anyway back to talking about the weather we have finally a bit late this year but we have lit our rayburn This is often Lyra's spot in the winter. She doesn't know I haven't lit it yet. I'm sorry, Lyra. It will get warmer soon. It will get warmer soon. <laughs> Lighting the Rayburn for the first time each winter is a really significant point in our household. It sort of signifies the start of all the benefits of having a Rayburn. Obviously the warmth, having the cooker running all the time being able to dry things on it. <laughs> it also marks the point of a lot of hard work in the coming months to keep it running. And the colours were looking so lovely outside in the hedgerows and on the trees the other day. took the camera out with me on a dog walk and then the sun went in <laughs> and it wasn't that good after all it was quite sort of misty drizzly in the end but I took the camera with me anyway and I thought I'd show you that little dog walk Can you believe it? We have had Merlin for a whole year now. It was the end of October last year we got him. I can't believe it. <laughs> he really is the most joyful thing, the most joyful addition to our family. I mean, there's not a day go by he doesn't make all of us smile or laugh every day. And um, yeah, it really does bring the household to life having a dog and he still thinks he's a puppy. Um, actually, I think he's starting to go through a bit of a teenage phase because basic commands like sit, he's just not doing if he doesn't see the point. When he was a bit younger, it's like, yes, I'll sit, yes, I'll sit. You asked me to sit, I'll sit. And now he's like, well, I don't want to sit. Why should I sit? Particularly if you haven't got a nice treat for me. So yeah, he's going through a little rebel, I think. So we need to up our training sessions. Um, and I might even take him to some classes because he really needs to calm down when we see when we see dogs out on a walk. It's like hit and miss. It's like 50-50. One minute he'll ignore them and just carry on walking and he'll be absolutely fine. And then the next minute he'll be like 
trying to play but pulling at the end of the lead to try and play which is not good but oh my goodness he is such a joy he is quite difficult <laughs> to manage so if you haven't been watching for a while i should have said um he is a half who's half bernese mountain dog and half newfoundland and he's definitely got the bernese energy and not the Newfoundland laid backness, <laughs> which, which we were hoping for more of that, to be honest, because that's what we used to with our previous dogs, with the Mastiffs we've had. They are so, such laid back animals, they really are. Whereas um, Merlin's got quite a lot more energy and needs entertaining a lot more. It's nice that we've got a dog that likes toys. We've never had a dog that was interested in toys before. And he just loves playing with toys, particularly if we're chasing him around the living room or playing catch or playing fetch or whatever. He's, he's It's quite cute. So yeah, I just thought I'd do a little Merlin update as I haven't really talked about him for a while. It's just lovely though. Right, so I'm going to do a little bit of art journaling because I've, um, I'm home now from Cornwall, obviously, and I want to catch up on some of the gaps I left because I couldn't sit and sketch it there and then, so, and I couldn't access... Oh, hello Merlin, you can see what I'm doing. And I couldn't access my photos very well, so I left gaps so that I could copy my photos when I got home. So I've got a gap here for Godolphin House, I've got a gap here for Truro Cathedral, a gap here for Sunset at Little Fistral. Yeah, and I might want to copy some other pictures as well to keep practicing my sketching. By the way, these stickers have come from, I'll show you, the Antiquarian Sticker Book. I think I showed you back when I was given it. Is it my birthday? Yeah, I think it must have been my birthday. Merlin, I need to shut the door. Do you want to come in? Sorry, interrupted by the dog, opening my door again. <laughs> so, I mean, all together, where I've overlapped them, these stickers actually look quite nice. <laughs> but individually, they're pretty horrible. I really don't like sea life. Oh my God, the seaweed that you get washed up on the beaches in Cornwall really creeps me out sometimes and in the sticker book there are just loads of it loads and loads so I thought I would take the opportunity to stick a load in so I've got some here and I've got some more on this page and honestly there is still I could do that about four times over with the amount that are in here so a little review on this book the antiquarian sticker book I mean, I was sold on the cover. Isn't it a beautiful cover? But inside the stickers, I have to say, can be a little odd. Can be a little odd. That some are just quirky, a little bit strange, <laughs> perhaps. Some are pretty. I mean, I like the butterflies, the flowers, the fairies. And then you just get some really weird random stickers. Anyway, I thought I would liven up my art journal with stickers did i say this before when i was talking about oxford i can't remember just to add a bit more color a bit more life and so i've been going through all of these to try and find relevant pictures i think when i get to london i still haven't gone back and done sketches of london i will take advantage of the more there's quite a lot of random animals <laughs> which of course are all on display in the Natural History Museum, so... <laughs> see, I mean, that's lovely. I can't see the, sh the shape of the sticker here. Can't quite make it out. But I love the I love these colours. And then you get, like, this is sea life again. We've got more jellyfish. But then you've got it like it's through a, a microscope. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of botanical, quite a lot of sort of... Like I said, animals. We didn't go to London Zoo, otherwise I could have put the penguins in. So anyway, yeah, I thought I'd just quickly show you that if you were considering buying this. I mean, it's very, very quirky. And I don't know how I'm going to use quite a lot of these. Oh, I could use the Queen with her jewels in my Tower of London bit, perhaps. But yeah, you see what I mean. So I just thought I'd mention this weirdness in case you were interested 
and it's not perhaps your cup of tea but I don't know I quite like some of them just not quite sure how I'm going to use them maybe just randomly in the corners even if they have no relevance to what I'm writing or drawing about at all I thought I would mention that little mini book review in case you're wondering what all this is about right so I'm going to start with Godolphin House So that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new here, please subscribe and click the bell button. That really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. I hope you're all well and do take care and I'll see you again next time. Thank you, bye.